Hey man, what are you doing? Oh, um, I'm just working on a new video. Oh nice, what's it about? Battlescape Dark Alliance, it's an old ARPG for the GameCube and PlayStation 2 and I- Wouldn't it be smarter to make more Necromancer content? Well, I like Necromancers, but I don't really think anyone would care about another- What the actual- <laughs> <gasps> oh, holy hell! I just cannot comprehend how ridiculously well the video about my favorite necromancer games did. Thank every one of you so much that watched it, subscribed and commented. Especially those over a thousand of you that took me asking for more necromancer games seriously and recommended so many other games to me. Over the last few weeks I went through all of them, sorting them by the game and started doing my homework. And what amazing games you guys recommended to me. In fact, it was so many that I decided to create a whole new series, where I play through a handful of the games you guys recommended to me and rate them in a tier list. Disclaimer, this tier list isn't going after what game I enjoyed the most, or at least not only that. This list is going to get sorted by what game made me feel the most like a Dark Lord that summons upon the undead. And it's only a handful at once, because if I talked about all of them at once, this video would never get done. So if there are other Necromancer games that I did not mention here or in my original video, write them in the comments. Doesn't matter if good or bad, it would probably make these videos a bit more funny if I had to suffer through a few stinkers as well from time to time. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified about the next video! I'm going to put Iratus, Lord of the Dead, even if for no other reason than just the titular necromancer narration. Cheesy as hell, but the guy is having fun. Kinda shame your army is limited to 12 units and can only go on a battle with a team of 4. On a plus side, you can defeat your foes by scaring them to death. I recommend Iratus, with a caveat that it is very glitchy and crashes my computer to the blue screen of death. Very meta. But it does scratch that itch. Iratus, Lord of Dead. It's a lot like Darkest Dungeon, but you are a necromancer getting out of the crypt. And you are fighting the pesky living while rising an army. Surprised there is no Iratus, Lord of the Dead. Iratus, Lord of Dead. It's like Darkest Dungeon, only you're the bad guy necromancer trying to escape his tomb with your team of summoner minions. Play Iratus, it's a Darkest Dungeon lookalike. The twist being you are the necromancer. No Iratus? The first game is already an interesting one, and you guys described it perfectly. It is basically Darkest Dungeon, but you're playing the other side. Which is actually way more interesting than you'd think. For example, you actually have to create your party members yourself by using body parts you find. You then get thrown onto the dungeon map and work your way through, tormenting and harvesting those foolish humans that dare to enter this lair. And due to you now fighting with the monsters against humans, it's also not you anymore that can go insane. Rather, it's one strategy you can go for, scaring them until they lose their mind, making it easier to end them. The gameplay loop is basically flawless and being extremely simple and effective, also being a lot easier than the inspiration, at least in the early game. I have looked at all the games I show here for a few hours, because, again, if I also had to beat all the games I am showcasing here, this video would never come out. And, ya boy gotta eat. I also just love the variety of creatures you can create. From skeletons to the biggest zombies I have ever seen, and even the fairies get some representation here. Very considerate of you, Iritis. And that's not even all of them. Look at the sheer amount of units you can unlock. There are also skill trees for your necromancer himself to learn some spells. And you have your own graveyard, where you can use some units of yours to gather resources or give you buffs. The game also describes itself as a roguelike RPG. Which is true, runs are pretty long. But the game is built around replayability and a certain factor of RNG in each run. I can definitely recommend this to everyone that enjoys tactical RPGs or basically everyone that loved Darkest Dungeon as well. It's a great and unique take on the formula and it definitely makes you feel like a necromancer. Just look at the little cutie. B tier. Because of your true necro risk and the sheer amount of different undead servants. Here are by the way also all of the other games from the previous video. Baldur's Gate have necromancer specializations in all of the games. You did the biggest mistake and forgot about D&D. Sorry for repeating 1000 dudes before me, but you should play Baldur's Gate 3 necromancer. Baldur's Gate 3, baby! Don't forget Baldur's Gate 3! You can dominate as a summoning type necromancer with necro-themed spells too. I'm shocked so many people actually thought I did not know about this game. Yes. I also have been questioning my sexuality thanks to a bisexual, definitely not, vampire and this guy that can turn into her. Bear while...
So Baldur's Gate 3 is basically an almost one-to-one -one translation of a DD and d campaign into a video game. From the way combat and classes work, there only being like 12 levels, and obviously you having to roll skill checks like every 16 nanoseconds. And yes, just like the rest of the internet, I love it. Except for when I walk into a room and see the perception check failed icon and sound play over my head. See, it's worse than any horror game to proceed after that. The writing, its world, the characters, everything feels so alive and there are so, so many ways you can tackle every situation. I am genuinely impressed how different every playthrough feels in this game. Normally I get bored of repeat playthroughs without a significant amount of time having passed between each one. But not here. It's just so much fun to roleplay different characters and do different things to just see what happens. And I also knew from the start that the wizard was able to unlock the necromancy subclass at level 2. The main reason that I didn't mention it in my first necromancy video was simply that it took me around like 25 hours to even unlock it. Because getting the necromancer subclass does does not automatically make you a necromancer. You have to reach level 5 first, after which point you can use level 3 magic spells. And I think you can already guess what magic spell belongs to level 3. I have to admit though, I was kinda underwhelmed by the spell at the start. You can only summon one undead at once, either a zombie or a skeleton archer. If you summon a new one after that, your previous one dies. And I don't know, I don't really think that you can say this is an undead army if it's like only one dude. Well I have to see it positively. This is still more people than what are active in my life, chat. I livestream two times every week on this channel, check it out. But then I entered combat with one and holy shit was I wrong. If a zombie hits a humanoid enemy, they get infected. And if they die where they are, they turn into another zombie. Unlike your main one, you cannot control them yourself, as they are AI controlled, and they only last for this one fight. But who cares? That is still a fight that I can turn into my very own recreation of World War Z. They can multiply exponentially and create a massive army, which is just sick. This alone made me change from dreading to fight big enemy groups to wanting to fight as many people at once as possible to maximize my army. The skeleton archers aren't even remotely as cool sadly. They can turn more enemies into them, but they are ranged fighters that deal extra necrosis damage, which is pretty neat. It's also pretty funny that every NPC is actually reacting to you having an undead with you, readying their weapons and running after you. Easy S tier, just for the zombies alone. You can do necromancy in Bloons Tower Defense 6 XD. What about Bloons Tower Defense 6? <laughs> Bloons Tower Defense 6 has a necromancer monk Halen Bao. What? Bloons Tower Defense has necromancers? How the fuck does it even work? Are you like reviving the Bloons you pop to fight for you or something? You aren't serious, right? I'm expecting that most of you here have played one version or another in a browser window while you were bored in IT class. But for those that don't, Bloons Tower Defense is a tower defense game. I know. Where you play start throwing monkeys that fight against balloons. You get money for doing so and can upgrade your monkeys to prevent the constantly stronger getting balloons from breaking through your defenses. And Bloons Tower Defense 6 now has a necromancer. If you level up the lower path of a wizard monkey, you are able to turn them into necromancers, doing exactly what I already joked about before. They create a second stream of balloons going into the opposite direction, popping enemies on contact. And having a few of them is actually a massive boost. The, how they call it, unpopped army, is a great defense against fast balloons that the rest of your monkey missed. You can also mix the necromancer with the other paths, for example creating some fire necromancers. But that's not all, no no, there's also the Prince of Darkness, who isn't just able to reanimate balloons, he's also able to reanimate Moabs, the mother of all balloons. What a fun class for this game. Didn't expect something like this being recommended, but it was a lot of fun to play a bit of my childhood again. B tier. Amazing defensive strategy, but they're kind of a one trick pony. There's Enki in Fear and Hunger too, although it's a different type of game than those presented in your video, so I don't know if he fits. Have you never heard of Fear and Hunger? I'm kinda shocked. Play Fear and Hunger the first game. It has a goated necromancer. I recommend you play Fear and Hunger 1. They have a necromancer in the game too, if you can at least make a part 2. Oh god. <laughs> I am once again expecting most of you to know of this game already, due to its massive spike in popularity, in no small part thanks to Super Eye Patch Wolves, Sea Dog VAs and countless other videos on this game. And I could not be happier. This game is so unique and deserves every little bit of love it receives. But I am a wimp. And this game genuinely scares me shitless. To the innocent souls watching this video that now are confused to how this small top-down RPG maker game can scare someone, allow me to pop your cherry. 
This is the first enemy in the game. And this guy tells me about how he wants to... Uh... Unconsensually and forcefully make love to me? Please, YouTube, don't demonetize me. I need the money. Uh, uh, thanks for the offer, but I sadly don't swing to the other side. Oh. And if you wondered what I censored there, yes, his literal third leg was just dangling around freely, looking completely terrifying. Yeah, the game is, by the way, also a roguelike, and there are no experience points in this game. It's overall just one of the most brutal RPGs I have played in a while, with the game actually rewarding you for your accumulation of actual knowledge to easier get through the massive dungeon of fear and hunger. Constantly dying and retrying until you eventually are able to fulfill your goal in this game and reach one of the several endings. And don't worry, you are also able to save. You just have to find a bat and win a coin flip. Yes, they gotcha fight sleeping. This game is filled with so many secrets and just stuff you can learn about, you can just lose yourself in it. And we haven't even talked about the necromancer yet. You can choose between multiple classes, one of them being Enki, the necromancer. And after brutally backstabbing our sister in the intro, we already have unlocked the skill to reanimate the dead. And how do we use the necromancy? Don't worry, it's as easy as sleeping in a bed. You have to find a suitable body and use the skill on it. And if you win the ensuing coin flip, you gain a new party member. If you fail it though, it still gets resurrected. It just now wants to beat the shit out of you for waking it up this roughly. Lovely. Having a few of these in your party is pretty useful overall though. Because they can use the armor and weapons that you can't. And especially where you still have not found any other party members. I actually did not get that far into the game. I tried. But after a few hours and having to redo the beginning multiple times due to being an idiot, we basically gave up. I want to, at some point, actually at least reach a single ending in this game. But for now, I think I'm good. And I don't know, if you want to much me suffer through this, maybe I could do a playthrough of this game on a live stream or something. That, that would actually be a fun idea. There's a sensor mod, so maybe I'm actually able to stream this game, and I probably would also be a lot less terrified by playing it, because I'm not alone. So how about this? If enough people want it, I think I can actually make, like, a poll in the video itself. And, and if, I, if I don't find out how I can do that, just, like, write into the comments, I hate you and want to see you suffer. Or if I manage to actually do it, do both, if you really mean it. It was already annoying enough to even get a legitimate copy of this game in Germany. Because, yeah, if you haven't noticed by my accent yet, I'm not only a wimp, I am also a potato. And thanks to some fun regulations, you can't legally purchase a copy of Fear and Hunger through Steam. So I had to go through itch.io to get myself a copy. The comment section was pretty funny though. It's literally just Germans asking for a Steam key. <laughs> A tier, because you can marry your army, and in Fear and Hunger, marry means fuck. Don't know if anyone mentioned, but Guild Wars 2 has a really fun necromancer class. Can be played as a minion mancer as well, with each minion having a special skill. Or you can just go a few different dark sorcerer types, like the one using a great sword. Should test Guild Wars 2. The necromancer class is cool. Guild Wars 2 also has a necromancer class. What about Guild Wars 2? It has a really good necromancer class. Huh. Guild Wars 2 was actually the game that I meant in my original video with me not liking necromancers that can't summon and are mainly just emo wizards. And apparently I was wrong. You can't summon in Guild Wars 2. And it's actually also a lot cooler than I expected. Their entire skill tree dedicated to just the minions. Um, okay. It's more of like a skill circle. And the thing you can't summon are... Very interesting. Like this flying torso that has its intestines hanging out. Or these little rats with human skulls as heads. Okay, on a design perspective alone, this game wins with having the most fucked up looking minions. But I have to admit, you can really feel that the minions are not supposed to be the main focus and are just little things on the side while you are the main source of your strength. Which, honestly, I'm not even that sad about. The quirks of the combat system of Guild Wars 2 make the Necromancer himself already a super fun class. Even though you are basically just an emo wizard, you're at least a really cool one. With a few different movesets depending on your current equipped weapon. And you also have this cool shadow form that makes you invincible and a lot stronger. The game tries trimming the fat with the entire quest and activity system, which is a double-edged sword for me. This game really, really itches the completionist in me. Every area has a designated list of tasks in it, and if you complete all, you get a small reward for it. On the other hand, with this, they also wanted to trim down the fat of a questing experience. And they did that by not really having a traditional side quest system, so instead of going to an NPC, accepting a quest and then fulfilling it, they are handled as an event and are activated automatically once you are in their area, where you then fulfill their requirements and automatically complete them. They are still normal main quests though, so don't worry about that. I like the idea, but think that I prefer the more traditional approach. 
but that's also maybe just because I'm not used to this. A problem that all quests share though, is how dragged out they feel. Most require you to fulfill a simple task, to fill up a completion bar. And that in itself isn't really a problem for me, but you always have to do so much, which results in you running around in circles, not trying to leave the area, doing the one or two tasks for the quest and seeing the completion bar move by a single pixel. The game also claims I don't have a full account for some reason, even though I have bought the first two expansions, which is kind of frustrating. I really hope this gets better later in the game. And yeah, like I already said multiple times, I only played all of these games here for a few hours and I don't feel good about judging an entire MMO game after just a few hours and reaching around like level 20 or something. So see this as a sort of first look. I'm going to show off this game in a future part again, when I reach the higher levels, so that we can talk about if my opinion has changed. But for now, the Necromancer class in Guild Wars 2 is a solid B tier, a really solid class overall for an already really fun MMO RPG. The minions just feel too insignificant. I don't know if it would really count as necromancy, but Inquisitor Martyr is a 40k asymmetric RPG that lets you play as a guy, X at mech now Inquisition, in case you know 40k, uh, that summon kinda mechanic servants. I say kinda because the tech priest class in Inquisitor Martyr, a Diablo free clone set in the Warmer 40k universe, isn't technically a necromancer, but is a summoner and minion master who can bring a variety of robots into combat, each with different weapons and roles. Also, the MF is so lazy, they don't even walk. They ride around on a platform with crab legs and instead of being emo, they dress like a pope. <laughs> this game has a necromancer class? Couldn't have anyone taught me about that before I wasted weeks of making a video complaining about it? Really, please watch it. I totally bombed compared to the necromancer one and I put a lot of effort into it. Maybe I would have actually liked this game if I picked this. So let's get it over with. Like the one comment has already said, the tech priest can summon crimes against humanity that fight for him. He also stands on a funny pedestal with spider legs, which is kinda cute. But overall, this is still Warmer 40k Inquisitor Mate, and I've already complained enough about this game in my other video, and no amount of minion summoner is going to change that. B tier. It's an okay class from what I've played. It is basically completely designed around you utilizing the minions, and the skill tree is also cool and gives actual buffs to your robots. It's still a slow and weightless mess though. You know what? No, this game is going in C tier, just for it being Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Mate. Oh, and of course, Total War Warhammer, straight up vampire counts faction with all the necromancy you can imagine. Two of them actually. You also have vampire pirates with much of the same, but more sea shanties. And As a fellow necromancer, you might want to check out Total War Warhammer 3. It's fantasy Warhammer, not 40k, so more like Lord of the Rings than Starcraft. It's like playing the board game Risk, but instead of having a dice roll simulating combat, it's instead a real-time RTS battle. Though you, can you should also play Total War Warhammer. Where's Total War Warhammer, damn it? Try Heinrich Kemmler in Total War Warhammer. He can be a solo mate with an army of skeletons to conquer the world. Total War Warhammer. And no Total War Warhammer? You can get next necromancers and vampires with necromancer powers, you would love Total War Warhammer. There are regular necromancers and pirate necromancers, highly recommend. This video, love the drawings. Thousands of guys, and play surprisingly organically, with also surprisingly good graphics and animations. Total War Warhammer has a necromancer class? I played the third one on release because of a buddy of mine being a massive fat. Oh my god, what are you doing here? Warhammer! Hello, my name is Naughty Jesus, and today I was invited by a rising blur to show you my favorite game series, Total War. In the latest installment, Total War Warhammer, you delve into the world of Warhammer fantasy and its many shades of chaos and ludicrous. Part of this world are the evil vampire counts, a faction of necromancers that try to conquer the world with, you guessed it, necromancy. In the game, you conquer cities and nations with your armies of soldiers and beasts. The vampires field an army of many undead creatures, like zombies, skeletons, giant bats, even zombie dragons. Gameplay-wise, that means that your units, being undead and all, do not flee for their lives if their morale is low, which normally is part of the game. They stand their ground until they are dead, or crumble to dust because they are already dead. They also cause fear and in some instances terror, which lowers the morale of enemy troops. I mean, look at them. It's not very pleasant to battle against that. Now we come to the interesting part. The vampires, being necromancers and all, can summon zombies or skeletons for a short time while in battle. So if your enemy has some nasty bowmen in the back that you can't reach, just summon some zombies upon them. Gunmen, summon zombies upon them. Cannons, summon zombies upon them. A huge one-eyed cow that throws boulders at you, uh, 
Well, the zombies won't kill that. But they will try their very best to stop the cow from bouldering you. And no! We are not done yet! The best part about the vampire counts is their raise the dead mechanic after each battle. So, see, where normally units get killed off in battle, the vampires have a small chance of units just randomly returning. After all, they are undead, they simply rise again. Maybe with a few less limbs, I guess. And now we get to the point that we are all been waiting for for this whole video. Yes, you can raise the dead. Where other factions need to recruit their units, the vampires can just summon some weak units from a pool of dead that are present in every region. And it gets better after fighting a huge battle. If the battle had big enough casualties, a marker will appear on the map, indicating that this location will bring plenty of undeads to race. And even better, this pool of units gets bigger and stronger the more casualties this battle cost. That that actually sounds like like, like a lot of fun. Could I maybe also play? <laughs> Did I mention that the undead come in three flavors? Dracula, Tut en Chamun, and Yar Har Fiddle D. So even if you lost your whole army while fighting, you do not care because you will just raise them all back up again to drown your enemies in the tide of undead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> So that we finally deal with him, I would put this game in 8 here. It's a lot of fun to play as a necromancer in this game. Or at least I think so, if he would have actually allowed me to play it! Probably hasn't been said ever, but somebody's a bit biased to roguelikes. Guess you like top-down games, huh? Sad. Aww. Someone seems to be annoyed about me showing off games I personally enjoy and play. Oh, I am so sorry for you, and just because you liked it so much, here are even more of them. <laughs> you can play as a necromancer in Nomad Survivors. You have to unlock the necromancer, but it is worth it. I enjoy the necromancer experience in this more than in Van Living. Give it a shot. Okay, I will do. Nomad Survival is a pretty basic Survivor's clone. A lot of upgrades, a lot of classes, a lot of unlocks, and, for some reason, one of the most fire soundtracks I've ever heard. But let's not get distracted. To unlock the Necromancer, you have to beat the first stage and kill enough undead on the second one. Easy. After a few rounds, you have unlocked Peak. The Necromancer starts out pretty weak, only being able to attack with his crow while running around. But after a few level ups, you probably already have found some skills that also make him attack directly. The crow isn't your undead minion though. It basically is the Necromancer. It constantly sets up summoning circles on the ground. And if you kill an enemy standing in one of them, they get turned into a classical servant of yours. They have a time limit though and disappear after a while, which isn't that big of a problem. Have you seen the amount of enemies rushing you? The class? It's kinda basic though. This is the only necromancy skill. The classes distinguish themselves by having a different and unique starting skill. All of the others are shared between all of them. Which sadly makes all of the different runs feel kinda samey. There not really being that many skills in general isn't helping this too. There's an upgrade for the necromancer that you can get in a run for hitting a certain level. Where you can choose between one of two paths. But to be totally honest, I don't really notice the difference. Yeah, they sound cool, but my army nor my strength feel like they are significantly increasing after this point. It definitely is a fun time though, and worth it for the music alone. B tier. If you want an actual necromancer survivors game, you should definitely check out Bone Razor Minions. In short, it's a necromancer wet dream where every type of mechanic you can think of, there's an undead for that. Drawback? It's hella addicting. Gonna throw my hat into the ring and say Bone Razor Minions is a really good necromancer survivor game where you're a necromancer and can res minions, and it's really good. No mention of Bone Razor? Video was great. Maybe it was already mentioned, but Bone Razor Minions fits the description perfectly, and it isn't talked about enough for how fun it is. Shout out to Bone Razor Minions. Bone Razor Minions does get a mention at all. Bone Razor Minions is another roguelike necromancer title that is quite fun. Surprised you didn't bring up Bone Razor Minions. Bone Razor Minions should have made the list. This is such a cute game. Bone Razor Minions just perfectly captured the energy of a Game Boy Color game. The sounds and music in the pixel art are just so outstanding in every way. That has its ups and downs though. The visibility can be, I can't really say it any other way, but it's almost non-existent at certain points. But don't let that destroy your fun, the game is highly customizable and has multiple ways of making its image clarity and visibility easier for the mortal eye. But that's enough gushing about the art style. What are you even doing in this game? As you could probably guess by the gameplay and the comments, it's also another survivor type game. But in this one, you only have the necromancer, and you also don't attack yourself. You only summon more and more minions with different and quirky abilities. 
abilities. So it being mentioned this often under the last video makes a lot more sense to me now. It's also just really addicting. The runs are only a few minutes long in the beginning, but you still get so much money that you can buy a ton of upgrades that unlock new abilities, enhancement for future runs, or even different specifications for a necromancer. All of it enhanced by the super adorable sprites. Just look at these skulls in the upgrade menu. Ah! It's just such an adorable little game that you can just play for half an hour, do a few runs and discover new minions and spells in. Easy A tier. For variety and constant new unlocks to discover more fun things within it. Click to Necromance is still one of the best Necromancer games I've played. Start small, kill one enemy to resurrect them, rise and repeat until the game gets so laggy due to the sheer size of your army. There's an unfinished, probably never be, game jam called Right Click to Necromance. I couldn't stop picturing it while watching this video and it's 100% pure necromancy at its finest. I originally found it from YouTube long ago and loved it instantly, so thanks for making a video that reminds me that it exists. I'm upset you didn't even mention Right Click to Necromance. My favorite is Right Click to Necromance. Hey man. You should definitely try a right click to necromance little very small in fact indie game It's really easy to finish the game, but it's just worth the time right click to necromance is literally what you need I actually wanted to show souls and survivors here But even just unlocking the necromancer class in that game is so much goddamn work that for the last 10 hours of playtime I still didn't have a chance to try it out So I'm gonna save that one until next video so let's look at right click to necromance instead and it isn't really that deep of a title, which makes sense. It was created for a game jam originally, and like the creator already states in the start screen, probably will never get finished. But what we have here is super adorable and a lot of fun. You command a small army of green greyish soldiers and if you drag them over to some blue soldiers, they automatically fight and after killing all of them, you can right click to necromance. So as you can see, the name says it all. You go around, auto-battling enemies and slowly growing your army with also slowly bigger and stronger getting units. And you do this until you run out of units or the inevitable heat death of your universe. It's really addicting as well. No wonder, it kinda reminds me of Agario if anyone still remembers that. Or now that I mention it, even those fake mobile game ads where they also auto-attacking enemies and growing the army with their remains. Ha! We humans really like these arbitrary number go bigger games, don't we? B tier. For this cute little stone golem. Ever made this thumbnail art needs to find a new hobby. Oh, uh, um, I also wasn't that proud of the thumbnail because it was hastily drawn in like under an hour because I quickly needed one before the video went live. But thank you for the constructive criticism, and I am definitely not taking it seriously. Is the thumbnail character from something or is it original? Because I absolutely love the design. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm, uh, I'm the coolest, yeah. Yeah, jokes aside for a second, I wanted to make this kind of official as well. The reception of a necromancer video was through the roof, and people seemed to really love the thumbnail art as well, for the most part. So, as most of you that have seen the previous video, and now this have already noticed, I wanted to give her a proper redesign to make her look more nice and unique. And here she is! The new channel mascot, Necrochan! I couldn't think of a better name. I tried keeping the original look intact, while giving her more defining features to make her stick out better. And of course Vanderboop had to stay. Going by the horny mofos in the comments, it's probably the biggest reason for the video's success. But yeah, I'm really happy with how she turned out, and I hope you also like her. And maybe you also have a better name for her, I'm not really the best at doing these things. But let's finally get to the last game today. So, since you add a Pikmin to the list, I believe you'd enjoy a game called Overlord. It's basically evil Pikmin. Along with that, another small game for mobile called Necromancer Story. Man, since you have added Pikmin to the list, you should most definitely check out Overlord and Overlord 2. Especially since the first one is like $5 even without a discount. Imagine a um, your typical Overlord Pikmin game, where you have different types of minions. But instead of playing as an you play... Yep, that's it. You guys did it completely erased these games out of my memory for the last decade or so and now rediscovered them to finally play them for the first time. We're only going to look at the first one today and keep ourselves the other ones for later because remember, your boy gotta eat. 
But even then, holy shit, what a game. How did I ever miss this? This isn't just a Pikmin clone, like it was sold to me. This is so much more. I would even say it's almost perfectly mixes the Pikmin elements with more classical dungeon crawler action games. It's everything I ever needed. But let's start at the beginning. You are the name giving overlord and are awoken from your eternal slumber by some goblins and after a short tutorial where you whoop the ass of the goblin court jester and look at the ruins of your once glorious castle, you set out to a grand adventure of building your own realm and you do that by helping villagers with their problems. Yeah, you actually help the people more than you are being an evil overlord. But, but, but that's a good thing, but because it's also important for your future followers to not only fear but also respect you as a leader. Yeah! And you can also decide in certain situations if you actually want to be good or bad. The game itself just has so many adorable and clever spins on a relatively classical setting, while also having pretty fun and dark humor. One of the first things you do, for example, is helping out the townsfolk by stopping the way too fat hobbit caricatures from enslaving the surrounding human settlements. Not the beginning I'd expect from this, but it was a lot of fun raiding the homes while they are having a party. <laughs> and I have not even talked about the minions yet. You have four different types you unlock over the adventure. The normal ones, that can't really do anything special, but they are good fighters and can wear all sorts of different shit they find lying around on the ground. The red ones, that are ranged fighters and throw fireballs, while also being immune to fire. The green ones, that are immune to poison. And the blue ones, that, yes, obviously, can revive your fallen minions. And yeah, they're also able to swim. And the game is really utilizing this army of yours. Remember in Pikmin where it was pretty easy to get hundreds upon hundreds of Pikmin of each type? Yeah, that's technically also possible here, but you don't only use them to solve puzzles or fight, which can also already be pretty challenging. I have lost way more minions to fights than I want to admit. But you also sacrifice your minions to heal yourself, restore mana, or to craft new armor and weaponry for yourself. So at least I have a pretty big problem keeping my army size all that high. And sorry, but some sections, like every section where I have to fight this fucking snake, is just a minion eraser for me. And I could always just... <coughs> Exploring this world and helping out its citizens is just a ton of fun. It can be kinda clunky sometimes, but when it works, it really works. And I just can't stop playing. You definitely can feel the age of the game though. The menus are extremely clunky, and I also was able to change any language options. Which I honestly did not even regret. The German voice acting is so beautiful, man. I have a laugh every time a minion speaks. Folgt mir, wenn ihr die Feinheiten des Kampfes und der Schergensteuerung kennenlernen wollt. On the first of multiple recording sessions, I could not stop playing this game for like five hours. Easy S tier. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. There's an overlord tier now. What you gonna do about it? Huh? Gonna cry? Huh? What you go- Phew. Luckily, this is finally over. I know I say this about after like every video at this point, but oh my god, this turned out so much longer than expected. I wanted to make this uh, like a kind of smaller series on the side, just to like farm in on the popularity of it, but... I couldn't help myself, I had a lot of funny ideas and I wanted to make it a bit bigger thing in, in the end. I hope you guys still liked it though, it was a lot of fun making this and playing all of these games. And like, there were so many more games I haven't talked about in this video. I have enough different games to talk about for like at least 3-4 more videos. But like I said in the beginning, if you have more, feel free to like text me in the comments and talk about them. I would be really interested in trying out even more different games. But then again, I probably could also mention that I'm just so overwhelmed by the current growth of my channel. Like, it was there previously, but it was very slow. I think I, before I made this video, I had like, what, a hundred subscribers maybe, not even. And it was like a few subscribers a day maybe. And suddenly it went to like a thousand in like, what, a few days? And then I'm currently at like two and a half thousand a month later. And I'm, I am i don't even know how I'm, how I'm supposed to comprehend that. The Necromancer video itself also just cracked 300,000 views. Like, holy, what the hell is happening? I am so happy and overwhelmed with this. I cannot stop being grateful. I am so happy that people enjoyed what I did. And I'm really hoping that this video is able to, like, get at least a fraction of that popularity again. I did a lot of things for this video to, like, make it more enjoyable than the first one. Because, like, the first one was, was very rushed. I want, I... This one is also, like... It was supposed to like come out last week, but then I had like one of the hardest working weeks of my life. So I'm currently doing this video while actually being on vacation just because I have more time now. And I want to make all of my videos the best that it that they can be. This is also like one of the reasons why every video takes like forever. I have plans for the future to like have more junk food content to have like a certain flow. But for now, I just want to focus on like the good shit. And again, if anyone's interested, I'm currently live streaming Shadow of War on this channel for the next video. 
because it is one of the bigger titles that I'm mentioning in the next video and you have to beat it to unlock the necromancy skill. So yeah, if you're interested, check out the live stream. If not, hopefully you like this video enough to check out my other stuff and see you next time.